Found a fish! Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, hopefully I'm in the, the screen here. We've got to move it this way a little bit. Uh, technical default. A little more? We're good. Friday night flies. Well, it's Friday night. We're getting a little bit of a late start, but uh, it's better late than never. That's our motto here at Friday Night Flies. It's been a pretty eventful weekend or a week. Everybody's getting ramped up for Christmas holidays. I'm not sure if we're going to have another show before. Ah, you know what? We might sneak another one in there. What do you think, cameraman? It's possible. we got a good show for you guys tonight. Scotty Holmes is in the building. And uh, Ricky is on his way down here. And the store is still open. So we've got another half hour here before people... Uh, are locked out and doing pulling and you want to help out. What are you guys out? doing sitting around? We're sitting around doing, hey, look at this. We've got people bringing in there. Did you make this? No, I got it. Man, that's pretty awesome. But anyhow, people are bringing in their bows. <laughs> We're live here on television with all, all these right, fine Aaron. folks. But uh, so anyhow, what I've been doing is just uh, tying some different patterns and oh. people are sitting around here. <laughs> we got fans in here. What can I say? <laughs> Well, it's Friday night, and it wouldn't be a Friday night uh, show without people sitting around watching what you're doing. Time flies, and like I was saying earlier, it's uh, we're getting ready for the festive season here. And uh, if I don't see you guys, Merry Christmas to y'all, and uh, best of luck in the new year. But uh, right now, I'm just because I'm on a solo mission. We've got so many people in here. I'm just gonna have to run over, change the camera for you guys, and then we're gonna get down to the uh, bottom. All right, so that wasn't too painful. We've got, uh, what did I call this, the Bro Minnow. It doesn't, uh, it's not just a catchy name. It's, uh, we, we named it the Bro Minnow because it's really simple to tie. It's heavy. Uh, we're just coming off the co season, so, I mean, we were doing a lot of heavy jigging flies where you just let it clank the bottom kind of thing, and as it it's coming in, you're stripping fairly fast, and coho seem to like eating things on the fall so as you're stripping and between strips they'd hit it and it would be a real crazy hard strip and strike at the same time which is uh pretty exhilarating well we're gonna get right busy and start tying this beautiful thing if i can remember how to tie it it's been a while since i tied it but uh what we're starting out with here tonight is a mustad 2 aught hook and that's the uh, it's a salmon single. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hopefully you can because our cameraman is busy on the floor right now. We're gonna get that in the vise. Hey, when that till is making noise over there, we're pretty happy about that. It's Bud Valley Sporting Goods. And we appreciate all the customers that come in here spending all their money. Anyhow, we're going to continue the show must go on. What I've got here is a 3 aught pink uni thread. And all I'm doing is just putting a little bit of a base down on this slick surface. Something for the materials to bind to. So, you don't need to be too crazy about covering it entirely. But uh, as you go down here... I'm going to start the uh, diamond braid and run up into here in this section on the body of the fly. But I'm going to give it a little hot spot on the curve of the, the shank here. It's kind of one of those spots that most people don't really cover up. But you know what? It's just that extra 10%. And about uh, a tenth of a cent of thread. So all I'm going to do is just create a little bit of a pink hot spot there in case fish are really paying attention to my flies that much and I'm just gonna build it up a little bit so I mean the thicker you make it the the pinker hopefully that's a word pinker is that yeah that must be a word especially when you're talking about pink and making things pinker so <laughs> So we got a little bit of a hot butt there, pink. Now we're going to go to uh, diamond braid flat, and that is in gold. 
So I got a little bit of that off the spool here. Hopefully we got about a million people watching right now. Sheridan's pretty new to the camera world. I do have a screen in the background open, so if you go to Facebook, you'll be able to answer a few, but it's just been too damn busy in here tonight, and there's more people coming and going. So, hopefully, at some point here, we get a chance to answer all your guys' questions. But the way it's going tonight, my guess is the questions are going to have to wait until after this show is done. So all I did was just lock in a little chunk of flat diamond braid. At that point, I'm going to lock this guy back up here, throw a quick whip finish. Quick whip finish. And I'm going to take my thread and throw it over onto the uh, bobbin cradle here. And we're going to get busy with this diamond braid. Man, is that stuff real flashy. Real sexy flashy. Yeah, having the full rotary bit for this uh, Montana Griffin here, the Mongoose, Montana Mongoose, sure makes wrapping bodies quick and easy and painless. So all we're doing is just locking down this diamond braid. And then we're going to get to the next step. There we go. Simple, simple. Like I said, it's been a while since I tied one of these. So now what we've got is we're going to get into this little chunk of Arctic Fox that I've got. Real supple, sexy stuff. And it's got some really nice, right. yeah, and it's UV, of course. So I got UV light. Show you how, can you see how bright that is? It probably just comes out like crazy glow, white. white glow, but it's it's uh, UV pink. So I'm just going to take a little chunk of that off, pull that out, and uh, when you first start on a new strip, it's pretty easy to get more than what you need, but when you're sitting down tying these guys, you want to start out with a chunk about that big, and then all you're going to do is take all the guard hair out of the back end of it. So I always tell people, you just grab it up a little higher like up near your tips and then all that guard hair stuff just falls right out and it takes the bulk bulk of that hair I mean if you have ever worked with craft hair or any synthetics that have a lot of guard hair and heavy stuff in the bottom end of the feather or, or uh, fur you want to get that out or it really bulks your, uh, your your fly up more than you want it to be so there you go we got all those guard hair out Anything I could probably go up with. Man, is it busy in the shop tonight? So, we've got a few more of those guard hair out. Thin it out a little bit more. If it's too thick, it uh, clumps up a little too much and it won't have the same flow. And what I found is the more sparse your flies are now, is that fish tend to eat them a little bit more than the big clumpy feathers and full full fly so you're matching it up about one and a half times the length of the shank cut her off lock that down so I'm gonna bring it back a little bit you want all this stuff right up on top right up on top just like that all right so now next we're going to get busy with a little bit of this flash of it. I'm not sure which, what this is the extra lip. This one is the ice blue pearl. Just happened to have it out with uh, another fly that we were tying a few days back here. I'm going to take a chunk of this good stuff. You don't need too much or it'll overpower your fly. So I usually throw about seven or eight strands. Uh, the heavier stuff, if you're going with like the lateral flash, or any of those you probably only want one or two strands or it will overtake your fly same thing match up your tips hey how you doing man okay. watching watching the fly we're tying here so and we'll throw that one right up on top same thing so you want to match it up with everything and lengthwise usually what i'll do is i'll just grab both of them and you want to just pass the tips of your fur and as you can see it doesn't overpower that fly. That's the last thing you want to have happen. It's overpower your fly with too much flash. Now what we're doing is we're going to some barred saddle that I've got, purple. 
to be precise and you want to pick out a couple couple feathers that are similar in size and length so there's a couple right there I've been picking through this one there's a big hollow spot right in the middle of this cape so we've got two that are similar in length and with these feathers you'll find that on every cape there's a little bit of a bend to each how they want to lay and typically I take those and I'll put the bend to the inside and the bend to the inside on the other side and when it's flowing that just gives it that extra depth and gives it a little bit of three-dimensional which is kind of what you're looking for and movement right so same thing when we're using mallard flank or teal flank is it's naturally barred and we like to use that a lot on our, our minnow pattern so like a one that's really popular with us is the moto minnow and the reason for that is because it produces fish and lots of them so you apply little tricks that you've learned with other patterns to other flies that you tie and Lord behold you start catching fish on other patterns that you're tying with similar materials for different applications so we've got the two matched up this one faces the inside all I'm going to do is just lay that in tight oh, on the inside I'm going to tie them both in at the same time. It doesn't really matter how these guys look all that well. It's just as long as they're going down the side of your down the side of your fly, matching up. It's just a break in the contrast. And this one same thing, so it's been going in. Some guys are probably like, "Hey, that's not how you do that." But Friday night flies, we do it this way. So make sure you got them somewhat lined up. Okay, now we lock them in there. Boy, did that ever come out easy. Hey, see that Ricky? Ricky's in the house. So you can spend all night trying to get these things to lay in there quick or perfect. But what I found is that if you don't just grab them by the horns and go for it, you could spend a lot of time trying to get these to lay perfect. Okay, so at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to work our way forward a little bit. And we're going to put in some dumbbell eyes. So the dumbbell eyes are going to sit on the underside. Yeah, that's crazy how well that just sat in there. I got lucky because I almost missed it on the underside. On that one feather. Watch live on Facebook? No, it's only watched on Facebook right yeah. now. But later, so if you guys are missing this and you're watching us live on Facebook, we upload this video that we filmed live up onto YouTube later. So I know myself, I prefer to watch it on, on YouTube just for the simple reason that uh, I can watch it on my big screen at home. That's usually where I watch most of my YouTube videos later in full HD of course so dumbbell eye up over stay put up and over back and forth figure eights getting this thing locked in there pretty like how's that look for distance so you want to be just back a little bit from so on a salmon hook on a mustad salmon hook it has an open eye and I just found that if you sit it in there, like this is what I'm talking about. There's an open bit and a step up. Hopefully, hey, can you see that? I hope I'm showing you guys right here. But you can see this step here from the open eye. I usually lay that dumbbell right at that point and it helps kind of with the transition. So all I'm doing here, throwing a few figure eights, locking that guy into place and then you want to briefly look and make sure that it's square with the fly, which it's perfect right now. At that point, you take a little bit of solar res. This, I can't believe I still got some left in this thing. Man, this, you get your money's worth out of these solar res bone dry. 
bottles, I'll tell you that much. So, you wanna let that set in for a second and then hit it with your light. Wow, now that's UV. You can see the UV of this fly. Wow, man, I'm blind. I'm UV blind right now. So, now it's on there, it's like rock. So, now, to finish this fly off and make it dead sexy, there's a lot of different things that people can do. Um, I found that just going over to our friend's stuff here from Hairline Dubbin, the dyed UV polar chenille, this is the black UV. Instead of sitting there tying a UV or a dubbing loop or whichever you want to tie, you can still do that. I just find that this stuff is really, really easy to work with. And you want to start it by tying it under the, under the eye, right up tight to the cyclops here, the bark dumbbell eye. So, what I'm going to do, roll it over, and I'm just going to leave this up on the top. And now, you want to probably about a section, about eight or so inches of it. I mean, stuff isn't really that expensive. If you need to throw a little piece of it away, you can throw it away. But all you do is get busy with it. And as you're going, you're kind of pruning it back so that it's not trapping all these beautiful fibers, these UV fibers. So you're pulling it back. Go once over, bring it back, and figure eight so you're filling in between the eyeballs. So you're building a little bit of a head and then pulling it all back. Wrap a couple in front, one more in front, and then we're gonna get slick with the pink thread here. And build, finish the head off. It's still busy here. Spud Valley Sporting Goods, man. She cranking. Okay, so now, safe to cut this locked in. One thing I have found with tying with either dubbing or big shaggy dubbings or anything that crowds your head when you're trying to build this beautiful tapered head on it is that all this stuff kind of gets in the way, right? I found a little trick. Your hackle plier comes in real handy. You can pull all this stuff back, simple dimple, and right in behind them dumbbell eyes, most of the time you can grab all that stuff. And if you can't, whatever's loose, it's time to just get rid of it. So at that point, see this one hair that's just not going to cooperate? Turf it. Turf that one. Turf this one. And now it's time to build that head. That one's not cooperating. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna try this one more time. You could do this a million times, and on the millionth and one time, it just ain't gonna work, but it worked. Okay, so you can see how we're building a little bit of a head. Nice pink head on this pink bodied fly. Make sure that you got all the loose ends because when you hit it with the UV resins, those things start poking through. So we're just going to build a nice little pink head on here. And that's coming together real pretty. Now, we've finished time. Whip finish time. And another note is when you got that hackle plier on there, face it away from you because it gets in your way when you're trying to use a whip finishing tool. Another tip of the month. Pull it down nice and tight. How's that looking, cameraman? Fantastic. Okay, we're getting close to being done with this. So now, before you let go of that hackle plier, get this bone dry in there. 
or you'll end up trapping a whole bunch of uh, polar chenille and you don't want to do that isn't that amazing how that uh, UV bone dry just makes that head look beautiful super easy pattern cured and the nice thing about this UV solar res the bone dry is that it doesn't do like if you use like Sally hard nails or uh, head cement that your whole flat box smells like head cement when before it uh, dries and even after it dries you'll see that uh, everything smells like head cement or nail polish or whatever it is that you're using for your head cement but at this point what we're going to do is kind of get all this stuff to flow together real pretty and of course my side looks a whole lot better than your side because that's the side i was paying attention to and that's what it looks like right there ladies and gentlemen the bro minnow it's not just a catchy name this thing's going to slam so i'll give her a nice little slow roll um i was sitting here at the vice and another guy came in and was like hey how do you tie a a rabbit a rabbit uh intruder and i said well it's actually quite easy and if you hang around tonight i want to show you guys how to tie a quick rabbit uh, intruder too so a, a bunny intruder or whatever you want to call it so anyhow this is the bro minnow and we're gonna go up top you guys hang out ricky's in the house scott uh, scotty holmes is in the house he's got a nice little pattern for you guys tonight as well and uh look forward to uh the rest of the show